We begin tonight with new CNN exclusive reporting on the classified document the former president claimed to have. Prosecutors issued a subpoena related to it, but his lawyers told authorities they were unable to find the actual document. CNN's Evan Perez joins us now with the latest. So what's going on here? They, can't, they, they literally <laughs> cannot find this thing? They literally cannot find this thing, Anderson. And the question is, uh, d does the president have the document somewhere? Did he lose it? Uh, did he even have it uh, during that July 2021 meeting uh, that uh, you know CNN reported earlier this week, uh, where he was waving it around? This was in a meeting where uh, he was meeting. He was having a meeting with uh, some biographers uh, working on a book for Mark Meadows, and he was said to be uh, talking about this uh, battle plan, this plan to attack Iran. And what uh, the, the the issue is that the prosecutors uh, that are handling this investigation, Jack Smith's uh, prosecutors, have sent a subpoena asking for any and all documents related to Iran, related to this possible meeting from July of 2021. They, of course, did this after uh, bringing in one of his closest aides, a uh, communications aide, uh, Margo, uh, Margo Martin, who was inside that meeting. She was brought before the grand jury. She was played a recording from that meeting, and that's when prosecutors then issued a subpoena to the Trump team asking for all of these documents, any of these documents, to be brought in. Uh, according to uh, the Trump legal team, they don't know uh, whether this document exists, and they also don't know whether uh, during that July meeting, Anderson, whether the president was just making it up or whether it's somewhere else right now. And is that the Trump legal team's position right now, that they still don't know, or have they, have they what's been the response still? Well, that? you know, they respond, right, yeah, you've seen a, a variety of their responses uh, over the course of the, this investigation, including calling this, obviously, a political witch hunt. The, the former president in a uh, town hall with uh, Fox News said that he has no knowledge of this July meeting, and they say uh, that they still don't know, obviously, where this document is that prosecutors are so interested in. The, the thing is, Anderson, the bottom line here is that prosecutors throughout months have uh, insisted that they believe Trump uh, has do continues to possess uh, classified documents that must be returned. And so they've gone to court trying to force uh, the president to be found in contempt. And so far, uh, they still believe documents are, have, let to be, have yet to be returned. The former president says that he doesn't have anything, anything left uh, in his possession. Anderson. Um, Evan Perez, appreciate it. Conservative lawyer George Conway joins us now. He's also a contributing columnist to The Washington Post and joining us as well as former Maine Republican Senator William Cohen, who served as Defense Secretary during the Clinton administration. So, George, we're talking about a document containing information about a potential attack on Iran. We obviously have not seen this document. We don't know exactly the nature of it. How concerning is it, though, that these attorneys say they're unable to find it? Well, it is concerning that the document was apparently flying around from Washington to Mar-a-Lago, perhaps, and then to Bedminster. But I think at the end of the day, in terms of a potential prosecution, it's not going to matter. What matters is the fact that he is said to have acknowledged President Trump on this tape uh, that he possessed classified documents and that he knew he cl uh, possessed classified documents. And in fact, he, he, that, that was his state of mind when he was requested to give the documents back later in uh, the next year and then refused to give them back and then gave some of them back and then lied about giving them all back and so on and so forth. I mean, it's just another smoking gun in a smoking arsenal. Secretary Cohen, again, we don't know this, what this exact document was. Would there be other copies of it that prosecutors would have uh, access to or would they be able to reach out to somebody in the Pentagon to find out exactly what this document may have been? Well, if the document did exist, then certainly uh, the Pentagon would have access to it. Uh, if the former president is quoting uh, something about uh, Chairman Milley, then Chairman Milley obviously would uh, uh, be a source uh, to go to to say uh, what was it, uh, what was involved. But rather than look at the legal side of it, George can certainly do that. I'd like to talk a little bit about the implications for our national security. Uh, we spend billions, tens of billions of dollars collecting intelligence in order to protect the American people. The notion that we are so cavalier, our elected leaders, the President of the United States, is so cavalier about those documents puts our men and women uh, in grave danger. And just today in the Washington Post, there's an article, a lead article, uh, talking about Iran planning to help 
uh, kill American soldiers in Syria at the behest of, uh, of the Russians. So this is what's involved in say, why are we making a big deal about this? Because lives really are at stake. Our men and women are uh, serving us are at stake, and the American people's security is compromised when this kind of information gets out. George, the former president was asked about the document and this recording of him acknowledging he had classified documents. Here's what he told uh, Fox. I don't know anything about it. All I know is this. Everything I did was right. We have the Presidential Records Act, which I abided by 100%. I mean, obviously, it's a ludicrous answer uh, just saying he doesn't know anything about it. There's allegedly a recording of his voice on this. He could easily look at his or ask somebody about it if he wanted to answer that question. How does all of this complicate the former president's defense as it relates to the special counsel's investigation? Well, he doesn't have a defense, so I guess he can say whatever he wants. I mean, all everything he does say, though, will be used against him. But the fact of the matter is there's just no dispute. I mean, even at the time of the search warrant execution back last August. I mean, we saw the search warrant affidavit, the affidavit used by the FBI to get the search warrant. I mean, there, there, there was just a, 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 it was virtually an open and shut case then. I mean, he had the documents, he refused to give them back, he lied about giving them back, and then they went and they executed the search warrant and they found all these documents. So I don't know that it makes, you know, his statements like that make it any worse for him. Um, they don't certainly don't make it better. Secretary Cohen, I mean, obviously the U.S. works with, relies on allies in its intelligence yeah. gathering. How does not being able to locate a document like this um, or even the notion that a former president would be waving around a document like this, how does that impact other nations' willingness to work with and share intelligence with the U.S.? Well, uh, it, um, it really erodes uh, and corrodes uh, our credibility. Uh, for example, the former president, uh, fo following the firing of the FBI director, the very next day released information to the Russian foreign minister and Russian ambassador that may have compromised uh, the intelligence uh, from Israel, compromising one of their assets. So every time uh, one of these take place, the other countries have to say, is the information we're giving to the United States going to be protected? Because we have um, people at risk. Uh, on the front lines, our ambassadors, our uh, military, they're all at risk. And so when we turn information over to the United States, we expect it to be uh, really handled with the, uh, the greatest of care. And that um, clearly is not the case here. The president has demonstrated it time and time again. George, what is the signal to you about the timeline? Or does it, I mean, I don't know if it signals anything, but what do you think about the timeline of the special counsel's investigation? Well, I think the timeline generally, um, I, I think, is just suggested by the fact that we know so much now about the investigation because what happens in these in these investigations is that there are lots of witnesses and the witnesses one by one go in and they're interviewed by the Justice Department or the FBI and and they're, they're sent into the grand jury and now you're getting to the point where there are so many people who know and the lawyers all share information um, to, to make sure that you know their their client is not saying anything that's being conduct, uh, contradicted by some other lawyers client they're sharing all this information. It means lots and lots of people know a lot about this investigation, which is why we're seeing this flood of information coming That's out, interesting. which tells me that this investigation is nearly done. And when you think about it, and you look at the calendar, I mean, we, you, you want to get the, I mean, if you were uh, Jack Smith, I mean, you're not rushing it for political purposes, but you're rushing to avoid the political implications of having this uh, having an indictment issued during an election season and of having a trial too late next year. If you want to have a trial next summer or earlier next, earlier next year, you got to bring this case sooner rather than later. And you want to bring, you want to bring these charges before the campaign really gets underway because that way you insulate yourself from the charge that you're doing it for political purposes. Yeah. But I think when, when this indictment comes out, it's going to be a blockbuster because they're, 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 given that what we know, it's an open and shut case many times over and I'm sure it's going to be a very, very interesting indictment to read. Uh, George Conway, William Cohen, I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you both.